Hello there, people of the internet. I am a military surplus collector. As a matter of fact, I've got a bunch of these all around me. This is my Mosin Gaunt 9130. And, uh, well, being a military surplus collector right now in 2023 is kind of a little bit more on the difficult side than it used to be. Something like this right here used to not cost all that much money. Uh, I know I have one of these that I picked up for like 80 bucks back in 2012, maybe a little bit sooner than that. Uh, not that much, not not that long ago, we were able to get these for not a whole lot of money, and the ammunition for these was also extremely inexpensive. Nowadays, prices on these have raised dramatically. One of these will run you about 450 bucks if we're talking just the standard 9130 refurbished Russian variant of the Mosin-Nagant rifle. If you like things like this, subscribe to the channel because, uh, well, I'm trying to grow my subscription count. And I'm sure you guys have noticed that this is not my normal uh, recording uh, area. Uh, just due to some uh, recent circumstances, my normal recording area is currently unavailable. So if you'd like to help me get back out onto the range for making content for you guys, look down below. I have a link to Patreon and a link to some merch where you can get yourself a shirt that I've designed or you could get yourself, uh, well, you could just do a one-time donation through the merch store. So whenever it comes to these military surplus firearms, well, are there still any good deals that can be found from military surplus stuff? Uh, well, yes. I have found quite a few really, really good military surplus firearms deals uh, in my time. And whenever it comes to military surplus deals, well, most of the time people are going to be looking for things that they used to be able to get for dirt cheap that are no longer cheap. Like for example, the Mosin-Nagant. I don't think we're ever going to see cheap Mosin-Nagants anymore, even if we do have a large amount of these rifles come into the country. Uh, just because of the demand for these rifles and what people are willing to pay for these rifles, I don't think the prices are going to drop all that much for these. And this is a really good argument for that. I have a 2A1, but this right here is going to represent uh, military surplus Enfield rifles, be they number one Mark III's or number four Mark I's. Normally, if we're talking a number one Mark III, a number four Mark I, or one of the variants of those rifles, chambered in 303, those are going to run about $450 to $550, depending on condition, if we're talking about ones that are in shootable condition. Well, recently, RTI, Royal Tiger Imports, had a massive, massive amount of these come in, uh, imported from Africa. And whereas, yes, there are some that are being sold for a lot cheaper than that $450 uh, price point, uh, those rifles tend to be extremely shot out or in very poor condition, missing magazines, missing bolts, they have some sort of damage on them. They're not usable rifles, and even if they do go bang, they're not going to hit anything. Uh, RTI does have actual uh, turn-in condition Enfield series, be they number ones or number fours, uh, chambered in 303. And they have usable Enfield rifles that you can go there and get, but those are still going to be running around that 450 ish dollar price point. And the reason for that is, is because that's what people are willing to pay. So although we have this massive influx, like this tremendous increase in supply, uh, the demand is still there and people are still willing to pay those prices for those Enfields. And so as a result, Royal Tiger Imports doesn't seem, uh, doesn't see a need to uh, lessen the price for those since people are going to be paying those prices anyway. So for rifles like say your Enfield or your Mosin or uh, just the, the main standard of go-to cheap uh, surplus rifle or the go-to standard for surplus rifle that used to be cheap, I don't think that the prices on these are ever going to fall. Now there are some rifles out there that are of uh, exception and some rifles out there that are, uh, there's, there's, there's both sides of the equation whenever it comes to this rule. Like for example, Mausers, there are plenty of Mausers out there that are overwhelmingly expensive for the rifle that they are, and then there's ones that are relatively cheaper. Like for example, this is a Yugo 2447. One of these Yugo Mausers will typically run you about 350, maybe 400 bucks, depending on condition, depending on where you get it from, etc., etc. And uh, for the quality of rifle that you're getting, that is a pretty good gosh darn price, but it's more expensive than these Mausers used to be. Of course, it's significantly less expensive than another kind of Mauser, like say a Car 98 uh, from World War II, 
or a Gewehr 98 from say World War One. those rifles are just overwhelmingly expensive because they were used by Germany during a world war and that provenance right there led those rifles despite the fact that the Car 98 is incredibly similar to this Yugo 2447 and does the same exact things uh, this Yugo 2447 will run you, you know, 350 bucks, but that Car 98 and 8 millimeter Mauser, something like that, would end up running you more like $1,200 plus if we're talking about a rifle that's in the same condition. So, especially for the overly desirable rifles, no, you're not going to find any deals on those. Or for the mainstream rifles that people turn to, like your Enfields, Mosins, and Mausers, no, you're not going to find any deals on those. But, guess what, there is, well, your Mauser 98s, so let, me, let me add that. Uh, there is some uh, upsides to that. There's plenty of non-desirable military surplus firearms out there that are a really good rifle that are often found at a really good deal. For example, Mausers that are not of the 98 pattern. Uh, typically, your Mausers 91 and 93s, those are typically going to be your cheaper variants. The 95 and 96, the Chilean and Swedish Mausers, those typically run about what you would be able to find your Mauser 93 for, or Mauser 98 for. However, like your Mauser 91 and your Mauser 93, the Argentine Mauser and the Spanish Mauser, uh, those Mausers can typically be found for significantly less than their later counterparts, but they could still be chambered in uh, some very capable and potent cartridges, like for example, 765 Argentine is Quite the powerhouse of a cartridge. Definitely not a uh, not a lightweight cartridge by any means. And I know I picked up my 1891 Mauser for $149 or something like that. Granted, it is sporterized, but it does go bang and it is accurate. Then it is chambered in 765 Argentine, which is how I know it's quite the powerhouse of a cartridge. Or I have a couple of Spanish Mausers, 1893 pattern. One of them I won at an auction for $99. And one of them I got at a gun shop for like $25, saying it needed a little bit of work, but I did manage to get it up and going. Uh, one is chambered in 762 set me technically, but it fires 762 NATO ammunition from it just fine. And another one is chambered in 7mm Mauser. And uh, those are excellent rifles. I've shown them off on the channel plenty of times, and I did not spend a whole lot of money on them. So early Mauser variants are a good example of uh, being able to find yourself some, some uh, cheap, usable surplus rifles. Or if you go and you get yourself something from, say, RTI that is a little less desirable, like this right here is an 8890 Steyr straight pull rifle. I got these rifles whenever they were being flash sold on a flash sold on RTI, and I picked them up for $99 a piece. Excellent, excellent deal on military surplus firearms. Uh, these are chambered in 8x50, kind of a hard round to find, but they can be made from 7.62x54 rimmed brass pretty gosh darn easily. And if you're a reloader like me, then that's definitely a cartridge that, uh, that you can make and shoot from one of these rifles. This one right here did clean up pretty well. We do have a busted up foregrip on it, but that's not really a, that's not really a deal breaker for me. The bore in this one is good. This one is nice and smooth, and it is functional. I'm very happy with this particular purchase for $99. If you're getting a less desirable rifle, like say the Steyr 8890s, then you'll find some cheap surplus guns out there. Or maybe you want something that you could actually find ammo for. I know there's a whole lot of 6.5 uh, Carcanos that are coming out onto the market, and 6.5 Carcano, although it can be a little difficult to find, uh, is being made to this day, and it's being imported into the country right now. And it's a little bit on the expensive side to get your hands on, Definitely way more expensive than, say, the Mosin was back whenever it was being sold for dirt cheap. But I've got like five or six Carcanos that I bought for under $100 because it's being imported into the country right now. Now, once the import dries up and these firearms are just being sold on the civilian market, then there's no telling what the prices are going to fluctuate towards. But yeah, yeah, these are a couple of examples, a couple of really, really, really good examples of uh, cheap military surplus firearm deals that you can find on the market right now. Now, if you want something a little bit more modern, then say a surplus uh, wood stocked bolt action full power rifle like the Mosin or the Enfield or the Mauser or one of these Steyr rifles, uh, then the, uh, well, there's, there's plenty of surplus handguns on the market. 
that are being sold off from uh, various police departments all around the country here inside the United States. A lot of police departments are swapping from 40 Smith & Wesson back to 9mm, and so you can go out and get yourself a really good quality 40 Smith & Wesson handgun for not a lot of money. As a matter of fact, I've got myself a couple of 40 Smith & Wesson handguns because of exactly that reason. Uh, it's just one of those cartridges that is falling out of favor in comparison to 9mm, and so as a result, the firearms that uh, utilize that cartridge are uh, a lot less expensive, especially because they're already being sold off as surplus. So the deals are out there. They might not necessarily be what you guys want. I know a lot of people are like, hey, bring back the $90 Mosins, or hey, bring back the dirt cheap Mausers, or hey, bring back this thing that I like because I like this platform. And they ignore other things like the 8890, or there's a lot of French Gras rifles that are coming in that are chambered in 11 millimeter Gras, and those are rounds that are hard to find, and you gotta make them yourself, and they're black powder. And that lack of demand means that those are going to be very low in price. I know I picked mine up for a flash sale. I think that one was also $99 from RTI. But yeah, there's plenty of deals out there. You can go out and find plenty of deals on military surplus firearms. Of course, a lot of these firearms uh, are being sold for prices that you could get yourself an entry-level bolt-action modern manufactured firearm. Like, for example, instead of spending $400 on a Mosin, I could spend $400 on, say, a Mossberg Patriot or a Ruger American or something like that uh, chambered in a modern cartridge and uh, odds are that modern made rifle would end up being more accurate than this military surplus Mosin. So the deals are out there for the military surplus stuff. Might not be what you want but the deals are in fact out there and uh, even if you don't find the deals you want on the military surplus stuff you might be able to find something with uh, some modern made handguns or modern made rifles for that matter. Uh, so all this being said, I think I've pretty much covered this topic <laughs> entirely, or at least I've said everything that I have to say about the subject. Thanks for watching, folks. I appreciate your time. Like, subscribe, share. Description below has a link to all sorts of stuff. Go check it out. You guys go off. Have yourself a fantastic day. I'll see you guys on the next episode. I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs>